Greetings builders, the Forbidden Sanctum is coming to an end, as a tradition calls, the last video of the league must be one where I choose and rank the 6 builds that I like playing the most. Of course, this is just a personal list and I'll be glad if you shared your own with me in the comments below. Also, if you decide to try any one of those builds on this last week of league, you can find the POB and complete guides in the video description. The first build to make the list in the 6th place is the Poison Seismic Trap Saboteur with the Shadow Class. What granted this build a spot on my selected list is the fact that with very little investment you can get it destroying endgame bosses like they're nothing. To list the pros of this build I'll surely start with the boss damage, I mean, this build is called the King of Bossing for a reason. Another great thing about this build is the survivability. You see, trap builds are already very safe by nature because you can throw them from a safe distance, but this build goes even further with many defensive layers. Now to list the cons I would start with its clear speed. Traps have a little delay before activating which can feel a little clunky. Another issue is that you need a divergent Herald of Agony to achieve a 100% chance of poison. As for budget, this build is cheap, you can get it destroying early endgame maps with only around 80 chaos. To comfortably advance to yellow maps, you need to invest around 120 chaos, and for easily completing your atlas, I recommend investing around 4 divines, but you can totally do it with less. Don't forget that on poebuilds.net you can find a list with all the equipments that you need to buy for this build, with direct links for examples being sold from other players. You need two mandatory unique items for this build. The first is the obliteration one that causes killed enemies to explode for a lot more clear speed. The other mandatory unique is the cold iron point. Replace your obliteration one for a cold iron point during boss fights to have a lot more single target damage. For clear speed, I'll give this build 8 out of 10. As mentioned before, traps have a little delay that slows you down, but to compensate with stacked trap throwing speed and use the obliteration one to explode packs of monsters. The boss damage is surely a 10 out of 10. You can easily achieve over 10 million DPS with a very low budget. If you're heading for boss farming, this is the build for you. For the survivability, I give it 9 out of 10. This build counts with over 100,000 effective HP because of high armor, high evasion, spell suppression and block chance. Also, trap skills can be used from a very safe distance. Following, in place number 5, we have the Night Blade Flicker Strike Raider with the Ranger class. This is the kind of build where you can have it all. It easily achieves over 10 million DPS, it's super tanky and as you can see on the gameplay, ultra fast. To list the pros of this build, I'll have to pretty much repeat what I just said. This is one of the most well-balanced builds I've ever played. It has speed, damage and survivability. It always have a very satisfying gameplay with explosion. And let's face it, Flicker Strike is just super cool. Now to list the cons, I'll start saying that this build isn't cheap. You need some mandatory unique and rare items that will exceed the divine price. Another issue is that you have little control over your character. This might be a problem on bosses like Queen at Ziri and the Shaper, where you need to know which clone to attack and mind your position. Getting into budget, this build is expensive and not a starter. You need at least 6 divine orbs to put everything together. You need 3 mandatory unique items for this build. The first is the Pharaoh's Fur Body Armor, which guarantees that you always have your full frenzy charges on. Next, we also need the Yoke of Suffering Amulet that causes all of our elemental damage to be able to shock enemies, causing them to take a lot more damage. Finally, we need a Perseverance Belt that turns tankness into damage. It does that grant 1% increased damage for every 200 of the lowest between armor and evasion. Good thing that this build comes with over 30,000 of each. For clear speed, this build is surely a 10 out of 10. And I didn't even need to tell you that. Check out this gameplay. This is some serious anime swordsman stuff. The boss damage is also great, especially when you can use your Berserk skill. As you can see, it kills guardians in less than 2 seconds. But I'll only give 9 out of 10 because this damage is reduced on pinnacle bosses when it's harder to stack our rage. For the survivability, I'll give it 9 out of 10. 
This build has almost 200,000 effect rate HP because of high armor, high evasion, spell suppression, over 30% chance to block and high chance to avoid elemental ailments. I just took one point out because it has a low life regeneration, making it vulnerable to poison. Next, in 4th place we have the Summon Raging Spirits Guardian with the Templar class. This build takes advantage of the high number of Raging Spirits you can summon to stack an absurd amount of poison on enemies. To list the pros of this build I would start with its boss damage. Once the build is complete you are going to kill even the biggest boss in just a few seconds. The survivability is also amazing, since you can have all the defensive layers of a Guardian on a minion build that is already very safe to play. Now to list the cons I would start saying that this build isn't for everyone, you need a lot of currents to put it together. Another issue is that Raging Spirits have a short duration and you have to open stop to resummon them. As for budget, this build would need at least 10 Divine Orbs to put together, as I said it's an expensive one. You need 4 mandatory unique items for this build. The first one is the Uniting Dream Sword, that grants the Envy Aura for a big amount of chaos damage to our minions. It also grants them 60% chance to poison on hit. We also need the Darkness and Throned Belt, that has 2 Abyssal Jewel sockets for us to achieve a 100% chance to poison our minions. Next, we need the Covenant Armor that grants our Raging Spirits a level 29 added chaos damage support. This means a lot more chaos damage to them. Finally, we need the Ancient Skull Helmet that grants a heal damage and attack speed boost to our minions. For clear speed I'll give it 9 out of 10. Even though we have many fast minions that destroy everything in seconds, they have a short duration and need to be resummoned often. That's the reason why I took 1 point out. The boss damage deserves 10 out of 10. You easily end up with over 30 million DPS that's more than enough to decimate every boss in the game. For this survivability I'll give it 10 out of 10. As a minion build you already stay far from danger. But with this one you also count with the many defensive layers from the Guardian Ascendancy. And that's it for today guys! You can find a part 2 of this video in the description below. Also don't forget to comment with your own list and take a second to give a thumbs up to support the channel. I wish you guys an amazing weekend and don't forget to keep building.